that's all I heard of it. There was nothing else to it. It was just taking a glass box and putting it up on the stand. So fast forward two weeks later, three weeks later, I, I don't know. And he says, calls on the radio, Tech 177, meet me at this address. This time it's a different address. I didn't know it, I didn't have it memorized, I didn't know where I was going, so I opened up this thing. Some of you may be familiar with it, it's called a map. And I opened it up and I searched for the street name and I found it and I looked it up and I said, okay, I know where that is. I go there and it's a pet store. The pet store is called Creatures and Critters in Woodbridge, Virginia. So I go in there, I got my tools because it's not uncommon back then, and, and certainly not now either, it's not uncommon for businesses to have cable at their place. So when he calls me, I assume cable's broken there and I'm the guy that's gonna fix it. So I'm carrying my tools in. I walk in the door and Art comes up to me and says, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what am I doing? I'm here because you told me to come here. I'm here to fix the cable. He says, no, dummy, we're not here to fix cable. Put your tools back in your van. So I do that, I come back in and I'm like, well, why are we here? And he says, well, remember when you helped me few weeks ago put the aquarium up on the stand. I said, yeah. He says, well, I thought since you helped me with it, you might be interested in being here when I pick out the fish. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not interested in that at all. But I get to shop for fish on the clock, being paid $7.25 an hour, woohoo. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. If you're gonna pay me to walk around the store, no problem. Now, there was a problem though. Now, <laughs> I should not talk bad about my wife while she's here but I don't know if this is an every woman thing, but it's definitely a Lisa thing. I hate shopping with that woman because when we go, particularly a fish store, when we leave the fish store, there will not be a fish that she has not seen. If there's 50 fish in a tank, she looks at every one and it's, it's annoying. So I'm the guy that goes in the store, does a big loop. Okay, I've seen everything, I'm out. But she's looking at everything. Well, Art, my boss, is the same way. I already was not interested in shopping for fish. So he's sitting there looking at every fish. I don't know what these fish are. They all look the same to me. And I get bored. And so I walked away. And I go to the back of the store, and they had tanks. In memories, everything looks always, you always remember things way bigger than they actually were. To me, it seemed like this tank was 20 feet long, just a massive 5,000 gallon aquarium. It was probably a 125, I don't know. But it's, in my memory, it was a really big tank. And it had something in it that I'd never seen before. And I had no idea that you could have this kind of a thing in an aquarium in your home. I always expected it to be goldfish or, you know, they all looked the same to me. It was nothing appealing. But this looked like a floating dinosaur swimming back and forth in this tank. It was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. And I'm going to put you all to the test. Can you tell me what it was? Thank you. Yes. Every once in a while, I've got to boost my ego a little bit here. But yeah, it was a silver arowana about two tanks down from that, not as big of a tank, but another tank was a Tiger Oscar. I probably could have held the mic out and you probably could have told me that too. Again, these big googly alien looking eyes, just this big gnarly looking fish, everything changed for me at that moment. I had not had any interest in aquariums at all. And all of a sudden, being bored out of my mind, I see these two tanks, that's it. I have to do this. I'm somebody that when I decide I'm gonna do something, you might as well get out of the way, because it's happening. And I started immediately obsessing, but the problem is, in 1993, there was no such thing really as research back then, unless you had friends or maybe a parent or an uncle or somebody, a neighbor that you knew that you could get information about fish keeping from. I had none of those. Nobody in my family, no friends. The only friend that I had that was in the hobby was my boss, Art, and he just started two weeks ago, so he didn't know anything. So I basically just came up with this idea in my head of how I was going to do this, how I was going to get an arowana, how I was going to get an Oscar. And to me, the idea that I had made perfect sense. And if you all were me, it would have made sense to you too. I was finishing my basement. I lived in a really small townhouse in Stafford, Virginia. And I was finishing up the basement. And I had this one space that was a nice flat wall. I was building a laundry room. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build an aquarium into the wall. I don't know anybody that's ever done that. I don't know anybody that has an aquarium, but I don't know. I've never seen that before. That's going to be the coolest thing ever. Instead of it being a picture on the wall, it's going to be an aquarium on the wall. It's going to be the coolest thing ever. And then as I looked at it and I started measuring things, I said, you know what? I can put two. I can have an aquarium here, an aquarium here, put the arowana in that and the Oscar in that. Because I, the only thing I did know from art, because I forgot to tell you, again, this 
threw me off my game. When I was standing in the back of the store obsessing over those fish, my boss, who you know, knew everything, Art, he came back, and he's like, what are you looking at? I said, I'm going to have these. And he's like, well, you can't put those, you can't put an Oscar and an arowana in the same tank. The, the arowana will kill the Oscar. I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to have two. So when I'm sitting there designing this, this aquarium in the wall thing, I thought I'll put two up there. And I measured up everything. I lived about two miles from a PetSmart. So I'm like, I'm going to take my measurements. I'm going to go. I didn't have all the measurements memorized in my head like we all do. How wide is a 55 gallon? 48. Okay, thank you. We all know. We're all nerds. We know how big these are. Back then, I knew nothing. So I went to the store with my tape measure, and I go through, and I start measuring. And I'm like, I can't believe what I'm going to be able to create here. It's going to be the most incredible thing anybody's ever seen. I have enough space for two massive aquariums. I'd never known anybody that had an aquarium this size. I had space for two 29-gallon aquariums. Again, I had no guidance on this. This was me. This was, and I'm thinking, Arowana's about that big. Oscar's little, like eight bucks. It's going to be perfect. I'll put the Arowana up top, Oscar. So get everything. It took me a while. I was finishing the basement. I got the green light from the future ex-wife of mine. She said I could do it. It took a while, though, to actually get it done. Built everything, went to buy the tanks. My, my boss, Art, again, being the experienced fish keeper that I knew, he said, well, you know, you got to let it run for a week before you put fish in it. I said, why? That seems dumb. He says, I don't know. That's just what they said. So I buy these two tanks. I put them in. I was so excited because I was able to get top-notch equipment for everything. I got the plastic fluorescent lights that went on each tank. I got the top of the line under gravel filters. Blue, y'all think I'm making up a story. This is fact, all of it. Blue gravel for the top tank with the arowana because I thought the blue will make the silver pop. It's gonna look great. And dark brown gravel for the Oscar is gonna make them look mean. It's gonna look awesome. And again, under gravel filters for both because I wanted it to be you know, the best kind of filtration possible. Get these set up, get them running. It's time to go buy the fish. I knew PetSmart didn't have them. Maybe they had the Oscars, but I, I was kind of weird about it. I wanted to be able to buy both fish at the same time. I don't want to take one home and then go back and get another one. So I went back to Creatures and Critters, which is where we were that first time. They had the big one, they must have the small one. Go back there and I go to the old man and I say, hey, remember me from a couple of weeks ago? He says, nope. I said, okay, well, I was here obsessing over this arowana. I'm here to buy one. And he says, well, we don't have them. I said, well, do you have Oscars? He says, yeah, we have Oscars. I said, I don't even know why I asked that because I'm not gonna buy them separately. I said, when will you have arowanas? He said, probably never. I said, why? He says, they're impossible to get, which we all know is ridiculous. Even in 99, 1993, arowanas were everywhere. I don't know what this guy's problem was, but he said, no, we don't have them. I said, well, can you tell me somebody that maybe would have them? He said, no. Why? Because I don't want you to go to another store and pay money. I want you to buy your fish here, but you don't have them. Well, I don't know what to tell you. So um, this gets worse, trust me. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't really know what to do, but thank you. So I went home. And I did the only thing I could do. Again, opening up a book, I opened up the phone book, went to the Yellow Pages, looked up aquarium stores, called every single store in the state of Virginia. None of them had arowanas. The only place I could find one. I never even asked them about Oscars. I just asked them arowanas. If they didn't have it, I would move to the next. There was a store in the state of Maryland, which I live about an hour from the border of Maryland. Then I did. Right now I live on the border, but back then I lived about an hour from it. So I, I found this store in Maryland. It was about two and a half hours away from us. Called them up, do you have arowanas? Yes, they're about eight inches. Do you have Oscars? Yes, we have tigers and albinos. Whatever you want, we got it. Cool. This was during the week, so I had to schedule it with my future ex-wife. Hey, can we go up there on the weekend and buy my fish? Yeah, whatever, I don't care. We go up there, we buy them, best day of my life. I had never been so excited to do anything because I was coming home with two of the coolest fish on earth to put them in two of the coolest aquariums on earth. Nobody had ever seen anything like this. I was going to be the coolest fish keeper anybody ever knew. I bring them home, put them in, and like I said, it was one of the absolute best days of my life. Sitting in my recliner, looking at these two tanks, blue gravel, brown gravel, unbelievable fish, but it wasn't only that. I also, I didn't want these fish to be alone, so I bought for the uh, arowana a rainbow shark. Now, that might sound silly. If the arowana was three feet long, it would have been silly, but the arowana was only about eight inches long. Rainbow shark was a couple inches, no big deal. I just wanted to make sure the arowana wasn't by himself. So for the Oscar, the Oscar was about 
three and a half inches or so, cost me eight dollars to buy them, and I had to get him some friends too. I wish, I've thought for months as I've been preparing for this, I've thought, what were those fish that I bought? And I don't know what they were. All I know is they were about an inch long, and they were Tetris. That's all I know. They were not neons or cardinals, you'd automatically think that. I don't know what they were, but they were small, they cost like a dollar each, and they were Tetris. That's all I know. So not only did I have this majestic arowana that was going back and forth in this Oscar, but I also had all the activity from those little Tetras. The rainbow shark hid and really never came out, but it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen, and I had never been so happy for about two weeks. After two weeks, you know where this story's going. My arowana tank, I don't know why, or I, I didn't know then. My arowana tank looked like it was a cloudy day. That's the only way I can describe it. it. The water was gray and it was murky and it just looked bad. The Oscar tank was crystal clear. It was perfect. The problem I had with that tank, and I could not explain it, nobody I knew could explain it to me. For some reason, all of those little fish, they disappeared. Now, you're laughing at me and it hurts my feelings, but back in 1993, the concept of fish eating other fish was ridiculous. Like, I, I, I didn't think of that. I never knew that that was an issue. So I'm literally sitting there, where did my fish go? Like, why are they not in here anymore? There was one head of a tetra on the substrate. So I call my buddy Art and I'm like, hey, you're the only one that, know, that I know that has fish. First of all, I have a tank that all the fish disappeared. I don't know where they went. And my arowana tank looks like a cloudy day. What do I do? What am I doing wrong? He said, I don't know, I'm having the same problems myself. I didn't tell you this, but that day when he was at Creatures and Critters to shop for his fish, he bought a Jack Dempsey, Red Devil, Green Terror, Jaguar Cichlid, which is nice, right? A 180 gallon tank, you think those four fish, a little risky, but could work out and could be spectacular. But he also bought four angelfish because they were really pretty. And I swear to you, I'm not making this up. 24 Cardinal Tetras. So he tells me, I don't know what the problem is, but when you figure it out, let me know, because my fish are disappearing too. I, you can't, I'm not making this up. I promise you this is true. So Art was absolutely no help at all. So I did the only thing I could think that would make sense. For the arowana tank, I said, well, the water's dirty. What am I going to do? I'm going to clean it. So I took all the water out, put the fish in a bucket, took it down, completely dismantled everything, cleaned the gravel, like was putting it in a bucket and really scrubbing it really good. I got that tank crystal clear, just like the day it was brand new. Set everything back up again, fill it up, put the fish in, it's perfect. Okay, problem solved. Oscar tank, the only real solution I can see for this tank is to buy more fish. Those must have been bad Tetras, the disappearing kind. So I'm gonna get more Tetras. Go to PetSmart this time. Again, I don't remember what they were. I don't know, they were probably Serpe Tetras or something, I don't know. Bought these Tetras, bring them home, put them in. Okay, everything's good. Problem is solved. Arowana tank looks good again. Oscar tank, there's fish in there now. It's perfect for about two weeks. And of course, everybody in this room, because you've all had access to all the information you could ever need, you all know what was going on. But I didn't know. I didn't have anybody that could tell me. I didn't have the internet. I didn't have people I could call. So at this point, it's, I'm four weeks into this thing now. I'm, I don't know what to do. This hobby is becoming more of a burden than it is anything else. I don't have the money to just keep buying these fish because they keep disappearing. So did the right thing, dismantled the arowana tank again, did the exact same thing I did the first time, clean it all out perfectly, scrub it, put it all back together again, fill it up with water, it's perfect. Problem solved. Maybe this time it'll work. For the Oscar tank, I didn't go back to PetSmart because they obviously sell bad fish just like the other place does. So this time I went to a store called MR Pets. This is in Dale City, Virginia. This was a brand new fish store. I go in the door, I tell the guy what's going on, and he, again, I'm not making this up, he immediately says, wait a second, if you want all of this information, you have to become a member of the store. This store, this, what this guy was trying to do was create like a pet store version of Price Club, which eventually became Costco. He wanted you to pay memberships and then you would get special discounts. So I'm like, whatever, if, if I gotta bribe you to give me information, that's exactly what I'll do. So I bought, it was like 40 bucks for the year, or something like that. I paid that and I said, okay, now tell me what's wrong with my tank. He said, well, <clears throat> first thing is for your arowana tank, the reason why it's going gray is because you're feeding the fish bad food. I said, okay, that, that makes total sense. I'd never thought of that. What about the Oscar tank? He said, well, I mean, that's, that's clear as day the place that you bought them from just had bad fish. So I'm like, oh, okay, so what do I need to do to resolve this problem? He says, so the arowanas, you have to feed them live feeder fish. 
I'm like, oh, I don't, I was a softie back then just like I am now. I was like, I don't really like that idea, but if that's what I have to do because I love this fish, I guess that's what I'll do. He says, so I'll sell you a bag of 10 feeder fish. Every couple of days, you just pull a couple of them out, put them in the tank, he'll eat them, everything's gonna be fine. I said, well, what do I do with the eight other fish? He said, just leave them in the bag, they'll be fine. I'm like, so I'm not a math genius, but we're talking about some of these fish are gonna be in this little bag for like a week and a half. He's like, they're just feeders, they'll be fine. So I'm like, okay, okay. I, I guess that's what I have to do. What about the disappearing fish? Well, you had bad fish, these fish right here will hold up, they're not gonna disappear on you, they're gonna be completely fine. Again, I don't remember, come on, it's almost 30 years ago, I don't remember what these fish were, I remember everything else, but I don't remember the fish. He sold me some small tetras, again, a store, owner sold me small tetras to go in an Oscar tank. I wanted to make sure you all heard that. So I'm on my way home. I'm thinking, finally, this whole problem is going to be resolved. I, uh, by the way, MR Pets was in business for like three months and then they closed. So I get home again. I do the right thing for the third time, completely dismantle the arowana tank so that I can get the tank clean again, put the fish back in it. I didn't have the heart. First of all, I didn't have the heart to feed feeder fish to the fish, but I definitely didn't have the heart to leave them in this bag. So I dumped them all in, water and all, dumped them all in the tank for the arowana, and I just went like this. Whatever happens, happens. That's, I just have to deal with that. For the tetras, put them all in there at the same time, just like I did all the other times, and everything was good for about two weeks. And once again, at this, this time, after two weeks, the arowana tank now it doesn't look like a cloudy day, it looks like a monsoon. It's like brown, it's horrible. There's goldfish that are just clinging to life. Arowana's still swimming around. It's, a, it's just the biggest disaster I've ever seen. All the tetras are gone. At this point, I, I, you can call me an idiot and I deserve it, but at this point, I figured it out that the Oscar was eating the tetras, but it was only because I was watching a football game. I, I will never forget this, and I actually saw him snipe one, and I was like, how could I not have ever thought of that? It never occurred to me. Y'all watch my videos and take my advice while after I'm telling you this story. I don't know if you're going to do that anymore, but it never occurred to me that this monster fish was eating these Tetras, and I felt really, really stupid after that. But the, the arowana tank was a complete disaster. Everything was just, it, nothing had changed. I'd wasted so much money. I murdered these 10 goldfish, like 40 fish in the Oscar tank. This was getting out of control. I thought the only place that I can go that might solve this problem for me is to go back to Creatures and Critters. And the reason why I wanted to go there, even though the guy was a jerk, he was an old guy. And old guys know everything, don't they? So I go back to Creatures and Critters, walk in the door, and the old man, I wish the chair was up here, the old man's sitting behind the, behind the counter and he's like this. I don't want to say what age I think he was because there might be people that age in here. I don't want to offend anybody, but this guy was a senior citizen and he is exhausted, obviously in a bad mood. I'm 19 years old. I walk up to him and I'm like, hey, let me ask you. Explain the whole thing to him, or I'm trying to explain the whole thing to him, and he interrupts me halfway through my first question and he says, let me ask you something. Did you buy the tanks here? I said, no, I, I live like two miles from a PetSmart, so I bought them there. He says, okay, did you buy the fish here? I said, no, I've been here like four times, and every time you, I, I wanted to buy the fish from you, you didn't have them. He says, well, go where you bought the fish, or go where you bought the tanks, stop wasting my time, go. He didn't kick me out, but I sure, sure felt like he kicked me out, and of course I'm standing there like, this guy's the biggest jerk I've ever met. When I think back on it now, having been a fish store owner in my day and owning a fish business now, I kind of get it, but you could not pay me to be as big a jerk as that guy was because you have this young kid. We need young kids in this hobby. You have this young kid that's asking you for help. He wants to do this. You have no interest in that. Why? Because you not, have not profited from that kid and you don't anticipate profiting from that kid. So no, stop wasting my time. Just get out of here. So. At this point, I've murdered dozens and dozens of fish. It's the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced, but I'm very happy to say I didn't give up. What I had to do was the only thing, the only option that was out there was figure it out on my own. It took me a while to figure out why my fish were disappearing, and I figured that out finally. With the arowana tank, I, of course, cleaned it all out again because, you know, it looked really bad. Stopped feeding the feeder fish. There was one piece of advice that I got from one person who had a tank one time, and it was the piece of information that helped me out more than anything else. I said, I don't know what to do. This tank is cloudy. It won't stop being cloudy. He said, leave it alone. I said, is that it? 
He says, just leave it alone. And I'm like, well, what's going to happen? He's like, it's going to get better. Just leave it alone. Let it do its thing. If any of you have watched any of my videos, and I'm, I'm assuming you have, you have heard me say, let it do its thing. That's something that has stuck with me for almost 30 years that my friend, who didn't know Jack, but he knew that, told me, leave it alone. Let it do its thing. I did that. That finally cured the problem, and the Oscar was just in the tank by himself because I was not going to continue buying expensive, basically feeder fish for this Oscar. So if you're somebody, I'm glad I looked at that because Creatures and Critters also shut down about 10, 10 months to a year after this whole debacle happened. So I guess I have that effect on fish stores. I don't know. But both of those fish stores that I dealt with in this story closed down. Now at my age and having had a fish store that also closed down, I'm sympathetic to that kind of thing. But the one was a total crook and the other was a total jerk, so I didn't lose any sleep over either one of those stores going down. But if you're somebody that has started keeping fish, even within the last 10 years, consider yourself lucky. Because there's people like Corey McElroy, Jason Adams, and his beautiful wife, Joanna. Hopefully me, you'll still hopefully listen to me. I've learned a lot since then, I promise. But uh, there is a world of information out there. There's so many YouTubers that are here in this building, but also all over the world giving you information. There's the local clubs, which as far as I was concerned, didn't exist back in 1993. I'm sure they did, but I didn't know about them. And how do you find out about them? I didn't know how to find out about these places. You have all of that. There's no excuse for not knowing what you're doing. And it makes me very happy to say, nobody should have to go through what I went through back then. And I'm willing to guess that, pardon me for describing you all this way, but the old timers in the room, you all probably had similar stories, or hopefully you knew somebody that didn't allow you to go through all of that like I did. But that's how it was back then. Consider yourself lucky to be where you are today. This is the most beautiful hobby. It's absolutely changed everything about my life, not only my profession, but, but everything. I've, I've made friends. They're in the room here. They're all over. It's a beautiful thing. Like I said, it's almost like this hobby is in easy mode now when you consider the way it was back then. So that's my story. I just had an idea though. Is everybody here familiar with Lisa, my wife? We all know the, the better half of my business. Should I call her? She's one of those weirdos that uh, she uses those Android phones. So I can't do it on FaceTime, but I can call her on Facebook. I'm going to trick her. She's not going to know what's going on. If she answers, she better answer. Hey, what are you doing? Well, <laughs> I'll show you who you all really wanted to see. Are you having fun? Wait, I need to hear you. Are you having fun? Awesome. I wish I was there. I'm uh, pretty sick of answering where's Lisa. So she's right here. We have to figure it out to get you to Dallas because I can't take this anymore. I don't want to keep these people all day. So say goodbye to everybody. I got to wrap this thing up. All right. I love you. I'll see you later. That was fun. I'm lucky to have that woman. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we have a few minutes here. And look, those boys were up here forever. They took up some of my time. So I don't think there's anybody speaking after me. Anybody want to do any kind of Q&A or anything? There's only one rule, though. You, you have to ask questions that I know the answers to. So anybody got anything you want to? I do not. Uh, Art is an interesting case. He's a guy that uh, didn't need to work because he was involved in an accident uh, that he got a huge settlement for. So he was working just so he wasn't bored, but eventually he got bored of that, so he moved on, and, and I haven't seen him since then. But yeah, he was a great guy. I admired him very much. He just didn't know very much about fish. Anything else? What is the best beginner fish? Ooh, you want to start some controversy here today. A lot of people probably think I'm going to say Oscars, but that didn't work out too well for me there. But I tell you, I, I get asked that question a lot. And my favorite question to that is freshwater angelfish, because you don't have to have a massive aquarium. I don't care what anybody says. They're one of the prettiest fish in the hobby. Easy to keep. Yeah, they can be jerks if they want to breed, but they're, they're unbelievable. I've, uh, I've had them forever, and I, I just I don't think you can go wrong with those fish. So freshwater angels, maybe uh, a small a small group of imbunas. Uh, people give them a bad rap, but that's what Lisa started with, and she did okay. So yes, ma'am. They are fantastic. Uh, she's up to about 350 of them right now. She's not a crazy woman. They are for our business. Uh, 
KG Tropical, or excuse me, hell, I don't know my own website, keepfishkeeping.com. We, we did struggle a little bit there getting fish because of all of the shenanigans going on, but we did get a huge shipment, and she's got more coming in a couple of weeks, so. That sorority tank got separated into two tanks. Uh, they're two smaller tanks, two 20 gallons, uh, but we have all the fish, but, the, uh, but they're not in that 125 anymore. In fact, there's five comet feeder fish are in that tank right now. Yes, ma'am. The question was her, her, uh, her pH is, all, is very low out of the tap. She uses RO water and wondering how to harden it back up again. I personally like to do permanent fixtures in the, or not fixtures, but I like to make permanent changes to the tank rather than use chemicals. Even though I sell some chemicals that adjust pH, I would rather do things like a crushed coral substrate or, or even pieces of coral in, uh, not live coral, but you know what I mean, the dried up stuff uh, in the tank as part of the decorations that'll naturally raise it up and help it to not fluctuate all over the place. I personally would rather do that than, uh, than using pH uppers and downers and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. My son and I are gonna start an aquarium-based YouTube channel. Any tips? How long you wanna be here? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The best advice I could give is, first of all, I commend you. That's absolutely awesome. I wish one of my kids wanted to do that with me. Have fun. Don't look at it. There's, don't start looking at analytics and how many subscribers do I have and all of this. Have fun with it, just like you have fun with the hobby. Make videos about what you want to make videos about, what you enjoy, what you're passionate about, obviously for the fish, but I'm saying have fun with it. And if it starts to be something that does well, reach out to me again and I'll give you the next step. But just have fun with it. Don't, don't act like it's a chore or a job or a hobby yet. And when you get your first million subscribers, come back and talk to me. This will be the last one because uh, I know you all want to get out of here. So um, I was wondering what the best um, like beginner plant would be, you know, the easiest plant. I'm so glad you answered, asked that question because I have recently stumbled upon one of the most common plants in the hobby, but yet it was new to me and I absolutely love it. It is called Rotala. I love that plant so much. Now, there might be plant people in here like, why is he saying that? It might be a fragile plant, I don't know, but for me, it was very, very easy to keep. It might be my water, but I love that one. It's become my new favorite, but the go-tos for anybody, the plants that anybody could keep would be things like java fern, anubias, you've heard that a million times, uh, mosses, things like that. And I, again, the plant people, I've seen you nodding your head, the plant people are gonna cringe when I say this, but I've always had really good luck with crypts. Any kind of crypt, they do fine for me. Everybody else seems to struggle, maybe it's my water, I don't know, but they've always been good for me. So I pretty much named every plant out there, but that's what I've had good luck with. And I think it's awesome that a young person is into a planted aquarium, that's good. But that was, that was a good time. Thank you all so much for coming out here. Like I said in the beginning, there's so much out there that you could be doing, but instead you chose to come in here and hang out with me. I appreciate it very, very much, and I look forward to talking to you out there.